Hi, welcome back everybody. It's 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Now, even though South Africa is making many strides in reducing child mortality before the age of five, it's not making as many reductions when it comes to newborns. This came out of the global gathering currently underway on the East Rand. Leaders and health practitioners from 55 countries are trying to identify key causes of these deaths, share solutions and save the three million newborn babies that die globally every single year. We uh, are going to be chatting to Professor Joy Lawn, who is a senior health advisor to Save the Children shortly. But uh, before we talk to you, Professor, let's take a look at the situation in Kenya. And this report was filed by Sarah Kamani. Inside her small teen structure in Korogosho slums in Nairobi, Philomena Atieno attends to her first patient. Outside, the queue is growing. These are no ordinary patients. They are Kenya's future mothers. And this is where they should be, at a health facility and in the hands of experts. At least 60% of women in Kenya deliver at home. Access to facilities and the high costs always putting them at risk of death for both the mother and the child. It is this state of affairs that Kenya's new president, Uhuru Kenyatta, wants to end fast. It's also exciting because it feels like it's on the way to universal health care. What is worrying is the 100 days. The 100 days has created a great urgency. It is an ambitious and costly undertaking. Free delivery alone will cost 2.2 billion rands, but there is more. Statistics indicate that 5,800 women die per year in Kenya during child delivery. And yet, Kenya has committed itself to ending maternal and child mortality by 2015. It's dangerous to be pregnant because it comes to about 16 women a day. Kenyatta's promise is a step towards attaining these two goals, but it will take more than just words. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Kenya. Let's take this issue further and uh, as mentioned, we're joined in studio by Professor Joy Lawn. Good to have you. Thank you very much Morning. for being with us here on Morning Live. Now, these three million babies, they, they don't even reach four weeks of life. What, what would you say are the main causes of this phenomenon? Well, if these three million babies that die in the first month of life, in fact, the riskiest point is the first day of life. Yeah. And the most common cause is babies who are born too soon, so babies who are preterm. And often we think that's the very tiny baby that needs to be ventilated. But around the world, there are many babies who are just a few weeks preterm. And by doing very simple things, they don't need to die. What are we talking about preterm? Anywhere before 37 weeks? Yes, exactly. That's preterm. Yes. And, and most of the, there are 15 million babies who are born preterm every year. Um, but around 85% of those, it's just six weeks preterm. So those babies, they're not born to die. They're born to live by mm. feeding them, keeping them warm, treating infections early. None of those babies should die. And yet all around, particularly in, in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, people see a small baby. They aren't sure what to do. They don't realize the baby needs extra help to feed. They don't pick up infections and these babies die needlessly. And this is, is this primarily because there's a, there's a lack of, of um, hospitals or is it, is it just because they're being born in, into rural areas or is it home births and things like that that are causing Yeah, it's these? a mixture. I mean, yeah. the world is changing. This year, Africa reaches a tipping point for births in facilities. We've just hit half the births in Africa. Uh, so 35 billion births a year in Africa, half are in hospitals and half are at home and we have problems on both sides okay. so you know we've had a great move of births into hospitals but not enough attention to what we do for babies and babies can die within a few minutes if somebody doesn't know how to resuscitate them if frontline workers aren't able to do the simple things or don't have the drugs or simple devices there what about in south africa let's bring it home what are, what are the, the the newborn deaths look like here? Well, South Africa, we had Aaron Motsaladi as the Minister of Health opening this conference. South Africa's made remarkable progress in addressing 
child deaths due to AIDS. But for newborn deaths, it's almost a flat line. Um, and the key things are how we improve care in hospitals, uh, both care at birth, but also the things that we do for preterm babies. Yeah, well, we, we've had a spate of some terrible baby deaths here yeah. in South Africa, and, that, and that's p purely due to negligence. And that is very unfortunate. And I mean, I can imagine this also falls in the categories that you know, negligence throughout the world must be a huge issue to deal with. Yes, I mean, it works both ways. I mean, the media has an important role yeah. in, in keeping people accountable for looking after babies. Uh, but we also need to re recognize there are health workers who work really against the odds. Oh, yes. So uh, we have an award for uh, nurses around the world who have done something extraordinary for babies. It's going to be made in September this year at the Global Neonatal Nurses Congress. Um, and one of the things the leaders from these countries all over Africa and Asia and Latin America are discussing together is how do we better motivate health workers and empower those frontline workers to be able to, to have the skills. In some ways, I, I worked as a neonatologist for many years, yeah. and now I'm working on what we, what we do. And the, but the people who can most save those babies are often most nervous yeah. of handling a tiny sick baby. And if that's the one thing that we can do is enable nurses, midwives, doctors, community health workers to quickly react to and save babies that need help. You say that this has been a silent problem for some time. Why? Why are we speaking about it now? Well, I'm delighted that we are speaking yeah, about it now. Me too. I didn't realise there was a silent problem. This, it, it's, it's been amazingly silent. I mean, around the world, every region except Africa, more than half of child deaths are newborn deaths, babies dying in the first month. Wow. We've made remarkable progress on pneumonia, diarrhea, not enough progress. Uh, but this has been silent. This has been something that until recently, you know, the United Nations agencies are really coming together. Uh, this is the first meeting where we've had people actually focusing on this issue. So the baby's care belongs with what's done for the mother and for the child. But if we don't pay specific attention to what's needed, the ambu bag that's needed to save the baby's life, uh, if they don't breathe at birth, uh, the simple um, antibiotics that we can give for those babies and people being able to be skilled to do that. Mm. Probably this is the most sensitive test of whether your health system works or not. Yeah. Here in South Africa, we've done so well for many other things. And this is the sensitive indicator of whether it's working because babies die quickly. And if people don't do the right things, then it, it, it's too late. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. I wish we could talk a bit longer, but unfortunately we've run out of time. But um, the conference ended. Has it ended? Is it still no, continuing? No, no, we've still, still got going? two more days. Oh, and we'd like to thank South Africa for being the host for this, this Congress and for the leadership within South Africa yeah. that's now going to pay more attention Wonderful. to this issue. And I know you were telling me off air, lots of ideas are being shared between the countries. And, they are. And, and progress is and being And action made. plans. There's going to be Fantastic. specific country and global action plan out Wonderful. of this Congress. Professor Joy Lorne, Senior Health advisor to Save the Children, talking to us here on Morning Life.